Guten Morgen, meine lieben Freunde, jetzt willkommen zurück hier auf dem Kanal auf YouTube, wenn es um Musik geht. Welcome back, guys, to this wonderful channel all about music and say hi to Dana, please. I love your intro for me. Thanks. Thank you. But hi, guys. Only the part where, where I introduce you, right? Yeah, because you sing. <laughs> something, something like singing. Uh, guys, there's something serious about K-pop. It's not, not for a long time, for, I think, right? It, it, it's always been, a, uh, yeah, something a topic uh, mm -hmm. in the K-pop world. Something um, we already got in touch, kind of, uh, because there was some bad news uh, around uh, 2019 when one K-pop idol oh, um, right. uh, committed suicide. And uh, I got across this video I wanted to watch, and I thought, why not uh, watch it with you guys together? Um, because it's always a very serious topic, actually. Um, and yeah, so I thought maybe let's check it out together. If you didn't watch this video, I have no clue uh, about uh, or how this video is going to be. And I'm not related to this channel, but I just wanted to check it out. And I told Dana, yo, let's check it out, because there are some... Uh, the latest news about yeah, God like Seven, the right? Recent news with God Seven. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's why I think it's just uh, the a latest topic. So yeah, very recent. So yeah, we just need educated to... about that. What's uh, going on behind the scenes? Yeah. So no subtitles. I'm sorry, guys. T R C N G. But it's an English. Yeah. In K-pop history, there has never been so terrible a mistreatment being exposed as that of, of TRCNG. This is a South Korean boy group formed by TS Entertainment and consists of eight members. They debuted with the EP New Generation on October 10th, 2017, with the oh, song Spectrum. That was before we In 2019, started. after two former members, Woo Yop and Taesan, departed from TRCNG, the whole mistreating scandal was exposed. This is probably the worst mistreatment that ever happened in K-pop history because the company not only materially abused members, but also hurt their physical and mental health. Specifically, TRCNG was given the worst living conditions ever. In fact, it's so terrible that people would never believe this is where a K-pop idol group actually lives, if not for the scandal being exposed. TCE didn't provide them with proper dorms, pay bills, and they even stole money from the idols. According to two former members, 10 members lived in an incredibly cramped space. Whereas eight members shared the first floor of a duplex apartment, the other two lived in a place that looks like nothing more than a storage room on the second floor. The ceiling was so low that no one could stand up all the way. Full of it's not heated oh well gosh. either. They had to live in clutter around their belongings, clothes, and equipment. The rooms oh weren't well maintained way. because, as you can see, the floor was damaged by frequent water leaks. As if that wasn't bad enough, the company didn't even pay the utility bills on time. One time, when their boiler was shut off, four to five members caught severe flu, so they had to sleep and shower at the sauna. That was when TRCNG was having a second promotion, Rising. When the members went to the hospital, they even had to pay for it themselves. Despite the ill health condition, TSE still forced them to perform. Though Tyson had reminded the agency multiple times to pay the bills, only when the electricity company sent the final notice did the staff agree to conduct payment. Besides, TRCNG also lacked basic necessities like a proper functioning toilet. What? When the toilet broke down, though the no members asked way. TS Entertainment to call the plumber, the label allegedly didn't respond. Eventually, Wuyop's mother had to call and pay for the plumbing services herself. Not to mention, the toilet looks extremely degraded. The company also didn't provide them with food. They had to buy it themselves, and only when they practiced late at night did the agency send them some fried rice. They even had to buy coffee for the staff members with their own money. And here comes the most terrible thing of it all. Many chat logs revealed staff members were getting drunk and cursing at the members. One staff was asking an underage TRCNG member to appear at an illegal entertainment bar, where prostitution is common. Oh Uyup my gosh. and Tyson even revealed photos of the members being assaulted by the staff. The images show a staff hitting one member's neck with a toothbrush. However, this man insisted it was just a punishment while they were playing a game. Wuyop further said he himself was hit with a metal chair and received severe bruises. He revealed he has medical documents and members chair. as witnesses. Not stopping there, TSC executives even used the members as laborers when they were still trainees. 
He often made them organize, package, post, and sell his shoes online. TSE what? also abused what? them financially through profit sharing. According no. to the nine-year contract, the profits from their music releases nine. are reportedly divided 9-1 TS Entertainment to TRC and G, 8-2 from their third full-length album onwards, and advertisement deals and events are divided 7-3. As there are 10 members in the group, the label takes 90% of the profits, while each member only receives 1%. Number two, GOT7. Yeah. GOT7 is a boy group formed by JYP in 2014. Oh, Though they... JYP did give a lot of investment in GOT7, Okay, this is uh, really, really uh, just just a coincidence. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they have the latest news in the video. From, from when is the video? It's from the the fifth. I'm not sure. Could be. It's not that old, so. Um, okay. But maybe the this, mistreating has been going on for a while. Yeah, so this could be really interesting. But the, wow, with the with the group before, wow, wow. I mean. That, Sickening. It's absolutely sickening. It's crazy. Why? That's no. And like they slaves, can't even right? do anything about it because they got the contract with them, right? I mean, but they could you, try with some. Uh, but, uh, with legal help, but, but you have to pay have money to pay yeah, for, to pay that. for and that. And if you don't get any money from your work. Yeah, and you still have the dream to become big and everything. Yeah. It's crazy. Wow. Okay formed by JYP in 2014. Though JYP did give a lot of investment in GOT7 in their first two years, the company gradually ignored them to the point that Agues became extremely frustrated. Their newest comeback alone, Breath of Love, Last Piece, the company has made fans triggered again for their careless promotion. Though this is nothing new, the whole situation has been pushed to another level when GOT7 didn't even have a proper MV teaser. Whereas their self-composed album has up to two title tracks, Breath and Last Piece, there were no proper and separate video and photo teasers for that. Mm -hmm. The fact that Twice, Stray Kids, and Itzy all have periodic and well-managed teasers for their comebacks, and then there's GOT7 having a ridiculous teaser True, is unacceptable. Right. JYP Why only released a meaningless that? photo teaser a few hours before the official MV aired. By that, it means there is literally no connection between the teaser and the MV. Moreover, all its portraits are typography of the title, and no pictures of the members. Before this comeback, fans were already super upset because all the members have no mutual activities over the past seven months. There were no variety shows, no commercial contracts, nothing for GOT7 as a group. In the past, a very similar thing had already happened in the promotion of Eclipse. Normally, before every comeback, the agency will release the poster and MV teaser with the full information of the date and time to release the MV. By that, fans can increase MV views for their idols in the first 24 hours. But in the teaser of the Eclipse MV, there is no information about what time the MV would be released. Hmm. Not knowing the specific release time, all the preparations and efforts to increase views for the MV of Agues were ruined. Not only slow in announcing the date and time of GOT7's MV release, the company also announced the comeback and world tour simultaneously, leaving fans with no time to prepare money to support their idols. Not many fans are financially able to buy both the album and concert ticket, so they'll have to choose between them. This caused GOT7's album sales to decline compared to previous comebacks. So it's been really going on for quite a while, actually. Yeah. Uh, crazy uh, because we checked out some uh, got seven stuff right and they're so good they're crazy good also their music videos are so good and True. the outfits they're i think i said it in the last video like their outfits are on another level mm. it's so sad and some of the members uh do other stuff as well yeah right? like jackson yeah i mean <laughs> to have jackson wang alone in the group <laughs> it's like yeah. Why how, would they how, do yeah, that? Yeah, how could you do that? It's crazy. I mean, they're all so talented, so skilled. It's Because uh, if you would support them the right way, like, wouldn't they even... If they just think about the money, wouldn't they even make more money with them? You would think, but I have no clue. There's, I don't they, they, I don't know. They... they I mean, there has to be some thought process, I guess, but it's only you can only guess, right? I mean, 
I don't get it. While the fans are trying hard to buy albums to increase sales for GOT7, one of Korea's reputable album buying sites... Pause to read. Okay, sorry. Hard to buy... Uh, GOT7 doesn't... along with their Division 2 label mate are the only JYPE artists who do not have album sales within the US. Why? That doesn't make any sense. No, no sales at all? Okay, that's great. Buy albums to increase sales for GOT7? One of Korea's reputable... It gauges have requested since... Album buying sites? Sonara? Apologize for not having enough albums to sell. In the hashtag we need GOT7 on Amazon trended worldwide on Twitter on April 5th, 2020 over 7... 150 emails, emails and tweets with the request. Uh, 750,000 emails and tweets with the request that K. Agassiz had given, which included Amazon distribution. On, on January 9, 2020, JYPE trended asking for the improvement of JYPE's management of GOT7 and to answer to the quest, uh, request that fans sent st starting December 5th, 2019. In the first week, most of the album sales come from the pre order amount. Meanwhile, other artists uh, at the label have had albums on Amazon and Bounds Day. JYP should have a full preparation of the number of See, it April doesn't 20, make any sense. albums released. But JYP signed a contract for the Orchid okay, distributor, all JYP artists' albums globally. But this has been acted upon all groups but Division 2 artists. I guess it have been requesting this for GOT7 longer than any other artists at the company. Upon other things such as video translations, uh, component on time tweets about GOT7 events and solo activities, as well as management of schedules involving their uh, schedules, involving their comebacks, pre order period, length, concert time, and more. But they didn't have enough albums to sell on the second day. It's quite apparent to see how the company. There has been a prolific amount of emails, requests, tweets about this for years on JYPE. Has never done it. Wow. For years now. Didn't even care. <sighs> I about don't stocking get enough it. albums to increase the reputation of GOT7 for their last comeback, Die. So, and this reputation of GOT7. Dear JYP Entertainment, okay, so on Korean. GOT7 on Amazon. Oh, yeah. This is the, uh, like like a petition request yeah. something. Or, but, okay. Yeah, what, what it you? just it really doesn't make any sense that the fans do everything to get their albums and stuff yeah, on yeah. Amazon because so they can get it easier or at all and they're not doing anything it's crazy they don't it's like they don't want them yeah, it's but crazy. why not then just release them <sighs> I don't get it okay um, I don't get it I missed what she said while we were reading okay. While the fans are trying hard to buy albums to increase sales for GOT7, one of Korea's reputable album buying sites, Sonara, apologized for not having enough albums to sell. In the first uh, week, most of the album sales come from the pre-order amount. JYP should have a full preparation of the number of albums released, but they didn't have enough albums to sell on the second day. It's quite apparent to see how the company didn't even care about stocking enough albums to increase the reputation of GOT7. For their last comeback, Die, it makes totally, totally no sense because I mean it's it, you would think that it would be easy money for the company when the, the yeah even the if they don't want them there have been anymore. so many requests that that, that they on that they weren't even able to sell anything because they're out of stock on the second day it's crazy why it's crazy it's just I just don't get it I don't get it I mean there are even possibilities to when you're not, I mean, there, there could be some reason that you would think that the, the group uh, won't sell so much uh, copies. Let's say something like that. But that's not the case. That's not okay. But if you th think something like that, that's why I want, want to say um, you could even uh, bring up possibilities to uh, sell by or, or to press or produce CDs or copies by order so uh so on demand yeah like on demand uh, production for uh, cds or copies or b mm -hmm. boxes or something are also available in the music industry for years now uh especially for indie uh, independent artists mm -hmm. and smaller groups and everything i mean they're not doing that either 
they are not doing that either. So there's just they just it seems like they just literally just don't care. I mean, yeah, crazy. I, I, I don't get it. Yeah. Reputation of Got Seven for their last comeback, Die. They promoted only for a week, while other groups usually promoted for two weeks or more. Since the member schedules were obviously not packed, there was no proper reason for the company to set up such a short promotion time like that. Besides the mismanagement, JYP also restricted GOT7's creative freedom. Unlike Stray Kids, who could just produce what they want, JB is a skilled producer but always has his songs rejected. Jackson Wong, Bam Bam, and Jin Young are skilled songwriters and composers. Still, if you check out the tracklist for their songs, they only contributed to very few pieces throughout GOT7's career. Mm. As if the mistreatment in their work wasn't enough, J Since 2016. pieces throughout GOT7's career. As if Since 2016, GOT7 have had to publicly ask for issues with Sangs to be dealt with. They have asked countless times via Instagram and even directly to Sasangs who have leaked their addresses, caused them to have to move and harass them day and night to where they are in mental distress. Jackson Mark and Bam's address have all been leaked online and JYPE has yet to have done anything. J JYPE continue to post the exact same message word for word every time God7 speak up about these issues and nothing is ever done. It is copy and paste that no one has ever been reprimanded for their actions. Why? That's it's a mistreatment in there. Because uh, I mean, Jackson and Mark alone are uh, in, in uh, Super M as well, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Or no, Jackson is not. Is he? No, I think he's not. Isn't? He? No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's sorry. Uh, just, just, just a, a solo artist. G g wonderful solo artist. Um, but Mark is in Super M. Sorry. Um, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, why have these side product, products as well, but not push the main project? I mean, that's also something I don't you know. Work wasn't enough. JYP also gave. Um, Young Jay, I saw someone keep sending messages to you and calling. Uh, calling you. She posted on Instagram story and doesn't feel shame about it. I feel so sorry for you because she won't stop. We try to report her, but it doesn't work. She treats us threats us, uh, threats us that she will leak all God seven numbers out. In fact, many people sell idols, uh, cacao talk numbers on Instagram. I'm so worried that uh, people keep calling you and disturbing your lives. Hope you're fine. Wow. Crazy. This, why? I don't. I really don't get why. Why this is happening? Yeah. This doesn't make any sense. Gave no greater consideration to Got Seven safety. Okay. A lot of the members reported Sasang fans lurking around their houses for months on and on. Some members have talked about getting many calls from crazy. So they double security using CCTV mirrors and filing lawsuits by God7 Sasangs have never received the same treatment. Their accounts are still active on Twitter and Instagram as they continue to follow and harass God7 publicly right now. Okay, that's great. Lurking around their houses for months on and on. Some members have talked about getting many calls from crazy fans. Agase then even tried to get JYP to take some action, but their response was rather late to take some action, but their response was rather late. I don't know. Huh. Number three, BAP. Huh. BAP is a boy uh, group founded by TS well, right? Entertainment, yeah, the same so. agency that managed TRC and G. BAP saw an amazing run during their promotional peak. They had back-to-back chart-topping hits, numerous world tours, and even held the reins in popularizing K-pop in the West. However, owing to unresolved conflicts, unexplained hiatuses, and lawsuits, BAP could not sustain the environment for growth. The situation was so desperate that BAP's leader had to repeatedly remind his fans not to buy their albums or their merch, in order to cut the support for the company. He mentions this almost everywhere, on his IG Live, Twitters, fan meeting, fan sign, and concert. He even dissed his company on live shows. He did wow. it whenever possible, directly, so it wouldn't get edited out. 
Towards the end of 2014, Whoa, reports started coming up that all BAP members had filed a lawsuit against their label, TS Entertainment, for violating the Fair Trade Commission's policy on slave contracts. From unfair working slave conditions to shady yeah. profit distribution, BAP was battling all sorts of corporate evils in their creative journey. The company had reportedly profited nearly $10 million since the boys' debut. Still, the members what? only received $17,000 each within the three-year interval. What? Divided over 40 months, oh this sum translated into roughly just $500 a month. While their company blatantly denied the accusations, BAP took to filing another lawsuit for defamation of character. To pay wow. the lawsuit process, Jungkook sold his sneakers collection and secretly did a part-time job as a newspaper boy. Finally, the two parties agreed, but the group took a hiatus until their next comeback almost a year later. After the hiatus, things got even more challenging as they needed to build up their name again. Though fans even boycotted their concert to let them rest a bit, BAP members were tortured by the company through the pack schedules. Up to seven comebacks a year, world tour once a year, and non-stop promotion concerts. They were forced to perform even when being sick. This is such an endless nightmare. Number 4. CLC CLC well. is a girl group debuting under Cube Entertainment in 2015. Over five years, many fans think that this group was seriously mistreated considering multiple aspects. First is their primary concept. They debuted with the cute concept, whereas all the members were initially supposed to follow the girl crush theme. However, Cube Entertainment suddenly changed their mind, leaving the girls no other way than doing things they didn't prepare and wasn't their cup of tea. It was said that Cube forced CLC to follow the cute concept in order to not overshadow their most precious girl group at the time, 4 minutes. Then, when Cube disbanded 4 minutes and only kept Hyuna, who also left eventually, the company changed the image of CLC into the descendants of 4 minutes. This move of Cube triggered lots of 4 minutes fans because they believed that 4 minutes had no respect from their juniors. It's easy to see how Cube just cared about profit and gave no attention to how CLC would be impacted. Then, the company forced CLC to follow the Cube concept again. It's reported that not until Sorn gave Cube a full-on PowerPoint presentation about the advantages of the Girl Crush concept, did the company let them come back with the title track, Black Dress. Which song did we check out? Do you remember? Black Dress? I don't think so. Around this no, no, time, they started to dress. regain their fans but from the Hobgoblin one. era. Yeah. Yet, instead of quickly giving them a second promotion, Cube introduced G-Idol and literally ignored CLC. Not just that, CLC's MVs were always filmed in a box, which fans often sarcastically referred to as stuck in the basement. Most of the scenes they filmed were in a room, and there has never been anything more than that. Compared to G-Idol, whose MVs are Oh, so Idol are, are a same. Cube entertainment. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, I love okay. Idol. Yeah, me too. Crazy. Often full of open space settings, CLC's fans are super frustrated because of such discrimination in the budget. Moreover, the fact that Cube never gave them an official light stick really drove fans crazy. It's even reported that CLC had to pay for the flight tickets themselves whenever no performing offshore. Though it's not clear whether what? Cube applies this rule to every group in their company, it is obviously unacceptable compared to other famous groups. Number 5. Pristine Christine is a girl group introduced by Pletus Entertainment in 2016. However, just after around two years of promotion, the girls disbanded and left fans in shock. Though they were first predicted to be the Rookie of the Year, things went downhill so fast that no one could imagine. For the reason of their disbandment, it's mostly because of how Pletus mistreated the girls. The first thing was about Kyla's image. Though many people initially thought that her curvy body was due to her own diet, they later discovered that the story was much more complex with Pletus' involvement. Some curvy body. <laughs> okay. Okay. Diet, they later discovered that the story was much more complex with Pletus' involvement. Some believe that, similar to the way Pletus forced Uwe to eat a lot to attract public attention, they were doing the same with Pristine's Kyla. As a result, she was fat shamed by many, many anti fans. Kyla was so depressed no that she went on a temporary hiatus amid the promotion with Pristine. Yet, it extended to forever, and she eventually returned to the States to rest and recover. It's getting crazy and crazy. It's evident that, for the sake of increasing sales, Pleta's entertainment did everything, even at the expense of Kyla's mental condition. 
Look at how the poor girl was completely ignored during the fan meet. When it was Kyla's turn on stage, all of the- Do you realize that she's standing in front of the camera and posing, but every, every camera is objective? Two cameras. Yeah, only two, yeah, two. Yeah, two cameras are pointing at her. Yeah, the others point at the other group members. It's crazy. Oh my gosh, I would cry if I were her. The interpreters immediately turned the cameras away oh from her gosh. and only focused on other members at the corners. Imagine how hurtful it must be for a teenage girl. Oh my gosh. After the recovering time, though Kyla and her family did consider her coming back to Korea to continue the music career with Pristine, Pletus blatantly announced that she was no longer a group member. Despite the explanation from Kyla's sister, things didn't change at all. Not only ruining Kyla's career, Pletus actually ignored the whole group when not letting them come back for nearly two years. Even when fans demanded an answer, they still pretended as if there was nothing wrong going on. They also continuously deleted fan cafe posts asking for Pristine's comebacks. Seemingly, all the things this company did were just to sweep everything about the girls under the rug. Because K-pop groups often have an active life of seven years, and Pristine had already dumped two years into the trash bin, as a result, Pletus decided to disband them. Number 6. Stellar Stellar debuted in 2011 with a four-girl lineup. They were initially introduced as a group produced by Eric. After two unsuccessful first songs, Rocket Girl and UFO, Stellar had to change members and the final lineup included Gayong, Chon Yu, Min Hee, and Hyo Eun. When Stellar first debuted, the group pursued a lovely concept combined with girl crush style. In 2013, the group released the single Study, and this was their first song to reach the top 100, bringing Stellar closer to the public. A year later, Stellar released their first album titled Marionette, and it all started here. The management company wanted them to get rid of their cute, mischievous image and become more sexy and seductive. During the promotion of Marionette, fans were even encouraged to press like on the group's photos on Facebook to see the members' as body parts gradually being revealed. Not to mention, what? the original MV of the song Marionette is also labeled 19 plus because there are too many erotic scenes in it. Despite all- This is a joke, right? N no, it's not. En encourage the, the viewers or the fans to click the like button so they can see more and more body parts reveal? Mm -hmm. Seriously? Wow. Okay, this is th this is a different level now. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Okay. With a lot of controversy, this became Stellar's most famous song. The highest ranking of Marionette on Gaon is at number 35. The song also ranked 34th on the Billboard K-Pop Hot 100 chart. But everything has a price. It was later revealed by Gaeyong that the company tricked the group into recording erotic scenes. The staff never fully conveyed their intentions to the members during filming. Gaeyong said, There was a scene where a member had to drink milk. The script was, Missing X rolling on bed, waking up, and drinking milk. At that time, we thought they simply wanted her to drink milk to portray a morning moment. They even told her to spit the milk while drinking to portray an exhausted image. But this scene can make you imagine even more. No one knew that was the purpose of the scene. Oh my The member gosh. that Gaeyong mentioned was only 20 years old at the time. She was so shocked that she still can't drink milk until now. However, oh every time the girls try to protect themselves, they are threatened with penalty fees. Since the girls were too young at that time and afraid of being fined, they chose to be silent. Moreover, there were times the whole group was only given one meal and they had to divide it equally among four people. Gaeyong also recalled, With the song Vibrato, they told us to dance in super revealing outfits. When we said no, they said, just give it a try before you say no. Eventually, we reluctantly took about five photos wearing those outfits, but it was too much. They seemed to agree with us, but then those pictures were released. Right after seeing those pictures, we called them and argued, but they just put the matter aside and said, so sorry, we won't do that again. After the concert, Interstellar, time travel through six years ended, Gaeyong and Chon Yul did not renew their contract with the Entertainment Pascal Company and decided to leave the group. In early 2018, Minhee and Hyun also left the group, Stellar officially disbanded. Gaeyong revealed that not only the members, but their families were also hurt by the concept that the group was forced to pursue. Mm. She said, Our parents are also very sad. Mm. They often hear people ask, Why your children are doing this? Although the members are now happy with their own path, it is undeniable that the former management company took advantage of them. In a conversation on Minhee's YouTube channel, 
Sky Young revealed that during seven years of working under Stellar, each member was only paid 9,000 US dollars, despite having many popular songs and bringing the company a substantial profit. So that's the end of the video. Crazy. Thank you for sitting with me through such a long video. Are there other mistreated groups that you want us to do for part two? Comment down below. Uh, there's so many. Oh my gosh. It sounds like almost every group had some uh, yeah, mistreatment. Some some yeah mistreatment um, going on in, in the company or maybe for some at least for some time or somehow. Mm. It's crazy. It's crazy, crazy. Um uh, especially the last one to um no it's it's just crazy. I don't the know. The last one is like whoa. Yeah. Yeah. That's sick. Mm, but I, I I guess that in that's that's not a special K K pop uh thing actually. I, I would say that uh in, in the US music industry they also have things going on like that as well. Yeah, that's But true. maybe even before, I mean, there were in the uh, Me Too era, uh, yeah, some right. really, really popular uh, mm. female artists uh, were yeah, told some stuff uh, that they was, were mistreated as well. Or, um, but also the, the, I mean, there are very popular stories about uh, how the Backstreet Boys and then Sync got totally, totally oh. screwed financially uh, by their management uh, because the manager was this, the same guy. Actually, um, he didn't pay them uh, all. I think nothing. He actually left them in 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 debt. In debt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with so millions crazy. of dollars, I think it was crazy. So yeah, it's it's just this industry, the music industry. Or well, every industry where there is a lot of money going on and a lot of uh, uh, spotlights think, yeah, on the artists the and whole everything. Entertainment industry. Yeah, it's uh, it's there's always there are always some people that want to take advantages of the artists or yeah, it's just crazy. But uh, to hear that with some groups we actually already checked out and uh, really like like uh, Got Seven and. Yeah, um, Got Seven. CLC also, uh, we did check out some stuff and uh, BAP also. It's crazy, it's just crazy. Um, I'm gonna link the video down in the description if you're interested to watch it again. And uh, yeah, leave some likes uh, on this video, of course, and the video we just watched. Um, very interesting. If you have something to discuss about this topic, um, please feel free to do that in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And uh, yeah, check out uh, Dana's channel as well. She's got a YouTube channel by her own. And um, yeah, I guess we'll see you in the next one. That made me so sad right now. Yeah, it's... it's. Uh, that really gets you thinking. Really, really, yeah. <laughs> see Crazy. you in the next video, hopefully. Yeah, see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.